TV. All right, so I want to play y'all a clip that I heard on the channel of Black Skin is Amazing. We Eidos makes the greatest. Yeah, I want you to hear what this panelist guest had to say about foundational black Americans and really listen to it. I think the young lady that's speaking is Haitian, okay? And I think that you FBA and you Ados need to heed this message. But, um... Yeah, to touch up on what you said, like, I just personally wish that, like, more Black Americans were proud of being American because I, like, I'm looking at, like, Aretha Frank. I mean, that's Aretha Franklin, right? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, I'm looking at the picture. Yeah, it, um, yeah, it's, it's Aretha Franklin. Yeah, and, like, it's just, like, look how beautiful you guys are. Like, you guys are, like, a beautiful group of people who have accomplished so much. And I feel like lately I've just been seeing a lot of, like, Black Americans who are not proud of America, and I don't feel I don't feel like like you should distance yourself so much from America because after all, America really is the only place that you have. I mean, you want to know why Black African Americans are confused? It's because the Haitians are telling us we not American, the Jamaicans are telling us we not Black, and the Africans tell us we not African. So what are we then? So the identity crisis that you see black Americans experiencing comes from immigrant subterfuge. Africa didn't come to save you from slavery. They damn sure ain't going to save you now. And you're better off here. And you have made so much history, culture and accomplishments here. And I feel like being black American, it is a big flex. It really is. And I wish more African Americans would appreciate that. I'm sorry, like I use African American because I know you don't like that, but that's just that's just how the terminology that I'm that I'm using. Right, right. You got tricked. You got tricked. You got tricked out of your birthright. That's what happened. Yeah, because unbeknownst to you, outside of America, being Black American is a big flex. While you being told here to hate yourself, their status with being a Black American. But being African from Africa has no global prestige. So when you think of Africa, when you think of the power brokers in Africa, who do you think of? You think of the Arabs, you think of the Israelis, 
You think of the Brits, the Chinese, the Russian, the Americans. Last person you think of is the Africans, right? They control some villages, but as far as controlling the economy and the politics of the continent, no. But you're told by these agent provocateurs that you're not black. You're not American. You're not African. So you ain't supposed to have no pride in yourself. You're just a slave. Yeah, you've been tricked out of your birthright, black American man and woman. That's the terminology that I'm used to, but yeah, like, I just never understood the hate that you guys get from, like, because, like, even, like, with the the bullying claim, because, like, you know, Africans are always claiming someone bullied them and blah, blah, blah. But, I mean, growing up in New York, the Caribbeans bullied Africans. It was because they had, like, this negative connotation surrounding them. I mean, I think, like, I was, like, e growing up, even, like, the, the Caribbean, like, there's always, like, this false notion that Caribbeans and Africans are so close that's literally not true. Because even me being Haitian, other Caribbeans, would pick on us for like, <laughs> for like resembling Africans and like they like say like Haiti's just like a little Africa and stuff like that. So if they don't like us because they we remind them more of Africans, then what do they think about real Africans? And take this from a New Yorker born and raised. There is no Caribbean African alliance in New York City at all. Only united against us online. But there is no cooperative of Africans and Caribbeans. And why the hatred for black Americans? That's what we keep trying to figure out. Well, why they hate us so much? We ain't did nothing to nobody. We just helped to get them over here and we fought for civil rights. And we, why the hatred for black Americans? Because we grew up in a first world country. Yeah, and I don't mean that like, you know, an insult. You know how we like to get into arguments back and forth. Well, that's why you grew up in a third world country. You, you know, yeah. Yeah, the reason why they hate black Americans is because we grew up in a first world country. So we look unoppressed to them. To them, we look unoppressed. In America, our poverty living in the projects is damn near as good as living in the middle class in a Caribbean country or even in Africa. Living in the projects with a job almost puts you on par financially with someone in the Caribbeans or in Africa's middle class, lower middle class so yeah they look at us like what the fuck are you complaining about y'all had it all they look at us like a little white supremacy ain't never hurt nobody compared to the arab extremists we had to fight and the african tribalism we had to survive from over there y'all spoiled y'all had to worry about white people white people stick out like a sore thumb we had to worry about other African tribes coming and killing us in the middle of the night with machetes. <laughs> and I feel like I'm seeing like Africans in Europe who are obsessed with African Americans. It's like you literally live in Europe. There's literally no reason you should be worried about African Americans. And I feel like that just goes to show how dope you are. Because if you could piss off people from another continent and you're doing something right, it's because I feel like there's a lot of jealousy towards black Americans within the diaspora, even African Americans. And I feel like that just goes to show how dope you are. Because if you could piss off people from another continent and you're doing something right, it's because I feel like there's a lot of jealousy towards black Americans within the diaspora. Americans and I feel like that just goes to show how dope you are because if you could piss off people from another continent and you're doing something right it's because I feel like there's a lot of jealousy towards black Americans within the diaspora Americans and I feel like that just goes to show how dope you are because if you could piss off people from another continent 
and you're doing something right. It's because I feel like there's a lot of jealousy towards Black Americans within the diaspora and Americans. And I feel like that just goes to show how dope you are. Because if you could piss off people from another continent and you're doing something right, it's because I feel like there's a lot of jealousy towards Black Americans within the diaspora. Even though people don't want to admit that, there's a lot of jealousy because in retrospect, you guys literally are the face of Blackness. And basically like making like putting blackness on a map and like making it cool and mainstream for now and i think like when people think of like the cool cultural aspects of black culture they're thinking about black american culture and i think that the rest of the diaspora doesn't like that you know yeah see this sister right here from haiti see she ain't got no hate in her blood for foundational black americans so she'll reveal these secrets that we're not privy to that deep inner subconscious on how some of these non-FBA blacks feel about us. She said globally, when people think of the cool aspects of black culture, it's black American culture. And the rest of the diaspora resents that. Yeah, Whitney Houston, Aretha Franklin, James Brown, Serena Williams, Michael Jordan, Michael Jackson, rap music, Eddie Murphy, right? Richard Pryor. All of the cool aspects of black culture are black American. Yeah, the rest of the diaspora doesn't like that much. We make oppression look good. You know, we got Aretha Franklin, we got Whitney Houston, but we talking about we oppressed. LeBron James. Yeah, LeBron James. Yeah, it's hard out here for a pimp, won a Grammy. So it's hard for other people that come from third world countries to see the level of oppression we under. While we trying to get food and electricity into our village and, and get, 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 get running water, you know, y'all over here watching the NBA and, and, and going crazy over the Super Bowl. So, yeah, we make oppression look good. So the, the dislike comes from us being from a first world environment compared to a lot of times their third world environment. There's some resentment there. You know, they look at it like, you know, all of this shit that I got, I got it now. But you grew up with that shit from birth. I didn't get that shit till I moved over here at 18, at 15, at 21, at 30. So the things that we grew up with, they feel as though we are spoiled. And ultimately... No, 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 not yet. I, I'm going to tell y'all ultimately what's the real divide between black Americans and especially black Africans, but but as well as other Caribbeans, too, especially those that want to be gatekeepers. Americans. And I feel like that just goes to show how dope you are, because if you could piss off people from another continent and you're doing something right, it's because I feel like there's a lot of jealousy towards black Americans within the diaspora. you're doing something right it's because i feel like there's a lot of jealousy towards black americans within the diaspora even though people don't want to admit that there's a lot of jealousy because in retrospect you guys literally are the face of blackness and basically like making like putting blackness on a map and like making it cool and mainstream for now and i think like when people think of like the cool cultural aspects of black culture they're thinking about black american culture and i think that the rest of the diaspora doesn't like that you know yeah well, now why is that well, why is that why what you just said is i heard matter of fact i was reading a, a twitter uh, a tweet this african said here yeah, um ados think they're that they can speak for blacks worldwide and that they are the face of blackness why do Africans hate that? She is Haitian, black skin, not African. I feel, why do Africans hate the fact that African Americans are the face of blackness? Yeah, why? I mean, I guess because they're overlooked. I feel like because they feel like 
I because I because it's like it's a gel. I feel it's it's a jealousy thing. Like plain and simple, it's a jealousy thing. Like they feel like their cultures should be in the forefront and their culture should be appreciated more. And when they when they when they see that people like people, it's like this the favorite child. You know, it's like when people when people think of Black American culture and like the all the celebrities when they're seeing that majority of the the trends are coming from Black Americans, feel like they have an issue with that, and that's also why like because there's there is also a huge debate with like cultural appropriation. So Africans actually love when white people try their culture, like they love it because I feel like Black Americans are so used to like white Americans partaking in their culture because black American culture is so mainstream and cool that everyone partakes in it. So like, um, so like black Americans are used to white Americans, like, um, you know, participating in black, black American culture, but Africans, when they finally see a white person wearing a dashiki, it makes their whole day because they're not used to that. They're not used to that. Where there should be appreciation and respect, there is jealousy. She said it's like the favorite child. You know, when you look at all the celebrities, you look at all the trends, they're all black Americans. And she said that we're used to white people. We, We grew up around them. We've seen them culturally appropriate. We've seen them wear our shit. We've seen them listen to our music. Right? Africans aren't used to that. So they're searching for that approval of white people just to see that their culture is accepted as being cool. Which it just isn't. It's tribal. There's nothing cool about it. It's tribal. It's cool for you and your people. But ours is a universal shit. We got universal swag. Y'all got tribal swag. It's a big difference. But. All right. Let me let me let me really. Simplify what she just said. I'm going to simplify this with with two names, the name of two people. If y'all really want to know what's the problem between black Americans and Africans and those from the Caribbean. What is the problem? I mean, the problem is what she just said. She's correct. Like, but like I said, I'm going to simplify what she said with just two names. Why are Africans jealous of black Americans? Why are some Caribbeans jealous of black Americans? Because they are Carlton and we are Will. Let me say that again. Because they are Carlton and we're Will. What a fresh Prince of Bel Air. They're the stiff cousin Carlton. So while they walk around and bragging about their culture, we have culture, we have culture, we're cultural, we're smart. I got all 99s and everything. We walking in the room with our 70, loud and proud, (laughs) buffooning and cooning, not giving a fuck. (laughs) They they trying to get all of this praise and recognition and approval, and and we don't give a shit if we get the approval. We like, yo, did you see my grade? It was a 70. Yeah, I passed. And and then we ready to go to the park, play basketball. While they sitting there like, I got a 99. I'm staying inside to study to get a hundred. So what will? 
in their Carlton. You know, they, they want to appease Massa by trying to adopt Massa's ways, Massa's way of talking, Massa's way of being, Massa's way of thinking, right? But we trying to find the next party. Like, well, we're in the dorm room goofing off. We in the dorm room goofing off a, a straight C student. <laughs> the life of the party. Yeah, you know I mean, big man on campus. Will. And, 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 and Nick Carlton getting straight 99s. And don't nobody know who they are. We get all the recognition. Everything we do is funny. Everything we do is out of sight, dynamite. Everything they do is on some corny type shit. Yeah. The relationship between blacks and non-blacks is the difference between Carlton and Will. Because for so long, and still to this day, people have always looked down on African culture as primitive. And that's usually the case, even to this day. That's usually what people think about it. So they just don't like that you're the... Hang on, let me ask you a question. Is African culture primitive? I mean, it seems primitive to me. African culture seems primitive. Would you agree with that statement? I think that there's like... I mean, the culture... I wouldn't say their culture is primitive. Like they actually, I mean, like South African culture is really, really nice. And I like respect cultures, but I honestly do think like there's some aspects of like African life that's primitive. I mean, that's the same case with Haitians too. Like I wish Haitians would get rid of voodoo. Like I really do. I really wish that they would get rid of voodoo because it has no benefit and it's backwards. Like, that's just the truth. Practicing voodoo is, like, literally so backwards. It's a it's a backwards ideology. I feel like even, like, because me personally, I'm an atheist. So, like. Come back to Africa. A place you've never been. And where you wouldn't be accepted because you're not part of a tribe. Unless you're a Mazungu. Yeah, like like Tyreek said, these are courtesy conversations. Courtesy conversations, really, because we're trying to see where y'all's head is at. Because like we say, y'all coming over here is no benefit to us. Especially if you're not on code. If you're not on code and you don't understand the depopulation tactics of the pale face, then we cannot trust you amongst us. We cannot ally with you. You know, you're coming from a situation to where you'll do anything to leave your country to get here. And we understand that. But that makes you desperate. That makes you dangerous. So, Black Skin asked her, is African culture primitive? And she said yes. Yes, and she broke down how tribal it is. She says she's Haitian. And that she hates voodoo. Voodoo has made her atheist. She says she wish Haitians would stop practicing voodoo. It's a primitive backwards culture. That's what she said, right? A fellow Haitian. Because it has no modern day benefits, right? It's like some Ogun versus tank shit. These people coming with tanks. Y'all pull out the Ogun figurines. Talking about Ogun. Y'all gonna get blown to smithereens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, 
A lot of these second and third world countries are primitive in comparison to the United States of America. That's partially due to colonialism, partially due to the tribal fundamentalism amongst the natives. So this is also why you see a lot of these swirlers and divesters are from the Caribbean and Africa. And they got foreign flag emojis. You know, cause and why is that? Why why do you have so many African and Caribbean women coming here, becoming divestors and speaking bad on black Americans? It's a projection. Secretly, a lot of them harbor animosity uh, against their men for their primitive tribal ways, for the cultures. They're mad at their men that their culture is not more modern. You know, Kardashian style. They want housewives of Nigeria. They want housewives of Mozambique. They tired of being looked at as people that just got cell phone towers a year ago. But they can't voice this to their men or be exiled or excommunicated or killed out of the tribe. And most of them do not know how to exist outside of the tribe. Okay, so there is a lot of resentment that they cannot voice in their homelands. And when they come to America, the land of free speech, they'll project it onto the black American man because they don't want to directly say the Nigerian men. So they say these black men. Because it's, it has no benefit and it's backwards. Like that's just the truth. Practicing voodoo is like literally so backwards. It's a it's a backwards ideology. I feel like even like because me personally, I'm an atheist, so like I don't really believe in any god. So it, the 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 mindset surrounding like that particular religion is just primitive. It's like hey, 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 it's, um, th mm -hmm. this is most. All right, y'all, we getting there. We getting near the end. Yeah, this was actually just a snippet, maybe like a, a three-minute snippet that I took from this episode on Black Skin's channel. And we're already probably past the 30-minute mark. Yeah, all right, so this should be the ending segment here. Now, Black Skin, he's going to explain the divide and how... Black Americans and those from the diaspora pitted against one another for money, power, status, resources, and jobs here in America, and how black immigrants are seemingly weaponized against and harbor ill feelings towards us at places like work and school. And this is way beyond somebody calling somebody some African booty scratch or some coconut when they was a kid. And I even have a personal testimonial on what that looks and sounds like, especially living here in New York, home of the black immigrant. So let me let black skin finish this up. So, and I told ADOS, they tend to get mad at the Africans and Caribbeans themselves. Companies. No, you shouldn't allow Africans and Caribbeans to take our spot because we're the ones who were enslaved and built America for you to even exist. So it's unfair for you tech companies and Ivy Leagues to give these uh, um, diversity quota spots to people who did not come here, were enslaved and built this country. <laughs> shouldn't allow Africans and Caribbeans to take our spots because we're the ones who were enslaved and built America for you to even exist. So it's unfair for you tech companies and Ivy Leagues to give these uh, um, diversity quota spots to people who did not come here, were enslaved and built this country. So, and I tell ADOS, they tend to get mad at the Africans and Caribbeans themselves because of this. It's like, no, it's not their fault. They're coming to America and say, hey, if you guys are handing on affirmative action, we'll take it. So I tell Ados, I mean, your complaint must be against the white man and the Ivy Leagues and these tech companies. Like, hey, you shouldn't be giving out these affirmative action diversity quotas to Africans and Caribbeans. 
It should be only for Adolf's IPA because we were enslaved here, Jim Crow here, and we built America. Without us, there would be no tech company to give out anything. So, I believe that Caribbeans and Africans should come here legally, but be able to. But they must compete on their own merit. I have no problem with Africans and Caribbeans coming to America. They make America more interesting, right? But they should not be taking our affirmative action diversity quotas. Yeah, 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 yeah. Black skin. There's a lot of truth in that. You know, I, I dis, I disagree slightly. I disagree at the part where you say, you know, so don't get mad at them, get mad at the system. You know, our grievance should be with the system, with, with the government, with the white man. You know, uh, that is partially true. Partially, I do agree with you on that. However, you know, it's partially because the other partial problem is them. Do you hear them online now? Yeah. So they've become actively weaponized against us. You heard them arguments. You heard what the Nigerians say. When I see a black American, my keys start to jangle because my, my, my keys want to go around his neck. He deserves to be in chains. I, I, I came on a flight. He came in a shit. He's a nigga. So nah, they've become actively weaponized against us. So you know, there's an issue on both sides. And then they're out here sabotaging the reparations discussion. Any discussions that we have as far as on our nationality, what our heritage is, what we're owed. Yeah, so it's not just, you know, the white man we got to get mad at. You know, and at this point, it's not like they're oblivious to the fact that they're being weaponized against us. So, like he said, African and Caribbean immigrants are coming here being given preferential treatment. And they're not the ones that fought and bled over here. They're not the ones over here that are owed a great debt. They weren't enslaved here. So these tech companies, these hospitals, these Ivy League schools... They all have these diversity quota spots and they're all going to Caribbeans and Africans, right? And that's the beef we have. Now, you're going to have some Negroes out there. The Jesse Lee Petersons, well, they perform better. They come over here and they want it. They they, they hungry for it. Y'all over here playing games, just want to play football and be rappers, You'll come up here with that skewed, weighted, contemptible, worst case scenario in order to justify not doing nothing for blacks here. Our educational system here is highly propagandized. So naturally, a race of men under that propaganda will reject a lot of that education. I mean, if you were to ask me why a lot of boys, why a lot of black boys do bad in school, you know, it's because they're black and it's a white education and they lose interest in it. That's why. The reason why Africans excel at education is because over in Africa, it's an African education. So they feel familiarity within that education. But anything over here is just white people. White people discovered everything. White people discovered the wheel. White people discovered math. White people discovered the right angle, the left angle. White people discovered the atom. White people discovered the the molecule. White people discovered everything. Everything. Black people get no credit over here. So you get black boys and they grow up under that. They already grow up under Jesus. They're already learning from a kid that that the white man is the salvation, is the key to his spiritual salvation. And then all of a sudden, when it comes out here getting an education, everything belongs to white people, too. It's a white man world. That's why, you know, so a lot of black boys, they're not dumb. They reject the education based on the tenements that every all the credit is given to white people. They don't see themselves in there. And I know a lot of people be like, well, you still got to get the education. You know, and that's why it's called psychological warfare. When 
You're told you created nothing. That's psychological warfare. You know, you can get into science and you can get into math. You know, at the same time, all the credit's going to be given to one person. You can't tell me somebody created math. Some white man created math, but then you got in the historical records pyramids being built 2,000, 3,000 years before said person created said math. The pyramids ain't wait for a bunch of European scientists to play around with geometry and trigonometry to build them damn pyramids. They built them pyramids way before white men was over there fiddling around in them books. But yeah, the resources we worked for, that we fought for, are begin, being given to the immigrants. Then they come here and laugh in our face about it. That's why you see this divide increasing. That's why you see the divide becoming bigger. You know, they don't have any tact. They don't have any coof. You heard that shit online? Yeah. Go into these chat rooms. Go into these African chat rooms and put you up a Nigerian flag or something like that. You, you'll hear this shit. Yeah, man. I love that brother, Young Skin, man. Sometimes he annoys me. I'm not going to lie. He be over there messing around with them stupid exoticals and them, and them golden sphere ratchets. But he young, so, so I guess he be over there trying to pluck off them little birds. So, you know, I give him that pluck away, young man, pluck away, you know. But, um, yeah, when he get down to it, he be on that shit, right? Yeah, so the reason why they want to give y'all them positions, the reason why they want to give y'all them jobs, the reason why they want to replace us with y'all is because y'all don't give a fuck about that racism shit. Y'all don't got no gripe. Y'all got gripes against the Brits and the French. So when Jamaicans and Africans is here, they don't got no problems with the white man in America. How you gonna have a problem with the man that opened up his border and let you come over here? No, and then when you get around them, you talk about, yeah, man, ain't no racism. Them black Americans, them crazy. Because you want our spot. And they want to give you this spot. Because you come here, your problems with the Brits. Your problems with the Arab. So you're a built-in ally. You're a built-in conservative ally when you come here as an African. You want your son to be married to a, a woman. You want your daughter to be married to a husband, preferably within your village, your culture, and, and, and all of that. And, and, and y'all gonna go to school, get an education. Y'all gonna go to the military. Yeah. Yeah, so you would be a viable replacement. Somebody that doesn't harbor the angst and the animosity that the black American does for the system here. Just like over there with you, it's a corrupt government that, that's keeping you held down. Here is our corrupt government. Yeah, when black skin get on it, he get on it. They don't want us in them jobs. You ever been at a job? And, and you the only foundational black Americans a bunch, around a bunch of Spanish boys, white boys, and Caribbeans, and then some shit like George Floyd happens, shit. You niggas gonna come there asking you, yo, why y'all be? Y'all. And two of the white boys asking you that, that they do, they do math. Yeah, get rid of the problem. Foundational Black America is a problem. Get rid of them. Get a rabble rouser. He want to talk about reparations and shit. He don't want to move on. He wasn't even alive when there was slavery. Yeah, but the policies after slavery affected his upward mobility. That don't even matter. He wasn't there. Shut up. Fuck out of here with all of that bullshit. 
Yeah. Black immigrant come over here buck dancing. Ain't no racism. Them black Americans is bugging. Give me a job. In my village, we had to walk 20 miles for some water. Yeah. You come from a village where you had to walk 20 miles for some water. And shit, you sell out your own fucking mother. You hear me? You sell out your own fucking family. You sell out your whole village. Shit. Told you, they can tell you, you need to go back to Africa and find your roots. And they tell you that shit sitting here in America. <laughs> go find your roots. Yeah, all right. Roots and coke to my ass, nigga. I'm tied to this country that hate me for life. It is what it is. quotas to Africans and Caribbeans because he knows that when you get ADOS in there, you know, we're going to have issues like, hey, you know, slavery, Jim Crow, racism. They know when Caribbeans and Africans get in those spots, say, hey, I'm not I'm not ADOS. We have no history outside of selling these motherfuckers to you. So we're coming here to make our money and we don't care about racism. See, we ADOS, that means we care about racism. So now we're calling out these white institutions saying, no, 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 you're not going to sidetrack ADOS by using another brown face to replace us. No, no, no. These spots belong to us. And this is why Africans and Caribbeans are upset that we, Adolf FBA, are now saying we're separate from all these uh, other black groups in America because they know the end game, reparations, and demanding that these set asides, like affirmative action and diversity quotas, be only for Adolf FBA, which is right. Caribbeans and Africans should be, when they come to America, they should be like the Chinese, compete on your own merit. And if you can't compete on your own merit, then go back to your ancestral home. Set aside like affirmative action and diversity quotas be only for Adolf FPA, which is right. Caribbeans and Africans should be, when they come to America, they should be like the Chinese. Compete on your own merit. And if you can't compete on your own merit, then go back to your ancestral home. Yeah, I'm going to play that part again real quick, but that's where I'm going to end this at. And I agree with black skin 100%. You know... Black immigrants, if you're going to come over here, come over here legally. And come over here on your own merit. Kind of like the Chinese do. Chinese come over here and get to work. Come over here and compete. Or go home. You shouldn't get FBA or ADO set-asides. When we barely get any ourselves. Besides that. We don't have any problem with you directly unless you come over here and allow yourself to be weaponized against us. With all that buck dancing. Talking about ain't no racism. But there's a lot of wake up calls going on. Let's see how many of y'all heed those wake up calls, those messages in those wake up calls. Bunker TV, I'm out. Black skin, shout out, respect. Go see the episode in its entirety over on this channel. Bunker. Set aside like affirmative action and diversity quotas be only for Adolf FPA, which is right. Caribbeans and Africans should be, when they come to America, they should be like the Chinese. Compete on your own merit. And if you can't compete on your own merit, then go back to your ancestral home. This is Adolf FPA ancestral home. We don't have any other place to go. And not only that, but we built America and we were slaves for this country. So we, we are demanding and will continue to demand as we get our voice louder together that, hey, 
um, I love Africans. Come here, make your money. I want criminals. Make your money. But the white man must be shamed for giving out these affirmative action and diversity quotas to Africans and Caribbeans when they should be for Adolf's FBA. Period. Because of slavery, Jim Crow, we built America. And without us, there would be no Ivy League. There would be no tech. And without us, there would be no Ivy League. There would be no tech companies to even for Africans and Caribbeans to come to. So, um, I'm going to shut up. Uh, I'm going to mute. Go ahead. Uh, respond. Okay, so I was going through the editing process to this video and I went over to Black Skin's channel real quick to give him a heads up on this episode coming out. And I saw he was on a live stream. All right, what's up, Bunker TV? I'm proud with the Afro, right? Look at your screen. Black Americans, Africans. See? 26,000 likes. You're right. What's up, Bunker TV? I'm adding this last five minutes of an episode about you. Oh, add whatever you want, brother. You know what it is. Yeah, they, they got humble. And, and, and they're getting more humble. They got humble and they're getting more humble. Here in America, Adolf said, Be, that's what we call ourselves, James Brown Black, and I'm proud, right? So I'm calling on all Africans to stop calling themselves black. They're not black, they're African. Call yourselves African, Nigerian, Cameroonian. Use your own national terms that you've always used. Stop cosplaying ADOS FBA. Stop it. Yeah, whatever you want to use, brother, it's yours. You know you got it, Bunker TV. Yeah, they, they have been in, uh, inconvenienced, all right. So no need for me to say fair use because I was given permission to use whatever I would like. So for the next five, six minutes, I will show you some commentary from Black Skin's channel where he was showing the results of the evacuation over there in the Ukraine and how the Africans were getting their wake up call. <clears throat> being thrown off of trains and buses and unallowed to cross borders. <clears throat> being forced to stay inside of a war zone. Well, for years, we know that the Africans have been telling us we ain't African. For years, we know that the Africans have been telling us we ain't American. For years, the Africans have been telling us we ain't black. Because black isn't a race or a culture. It's the absence of a color. But now, that shit done hit the fan, and they see how little regard Africans are held in globally in comparison to black Americans. Miraculously, they're all black people and niggas now and the reason why they're calling themselves black now over there is because they know that black americans would not get the same treatment as africans black americans would have been evacuated why because our consulate holds weight being black American holds weight. Bunker TV. He won't. Let me see if I can find him. Let me see that. Okay, listen to this dude. Okay. Count how many times he calls himself African or anyone there African. They're all Africans. Ain't no Adolf Zeppi. These are all Africans. And notice this guy would not say African to save his life. All he's going to keep saying is flat blackness, black, black, black. All he's doing is using that. He, he's using his mouthpiece to represent. He's using the Adolf's FBA term black. Listen to him. What? Watch. He won't call himself black no matter what. He's using Adolf's FBA terminology black and nigga. Listen. These people left without taking the blacks. None of the blacks, man. See, see. None. 
even the black guys that already have kids, they took their kids and their wife and left the niggas behind. Like everyone is stranded. This is this is really too bad. Man, these people left without taking the blacks. Man. None of the blacks, man. What do you say? These people left without taking the blacks. None of the blacks. See, see. No. Even the black guys are already black guys. See more. This is all Ados FBA terminology. This is not African terminology. He is using 100% Ados FBA terminology. They have kids. They took their kids and their wife and left the niggas behind. Like left the niggas behind. This guy is using 100% Ados FBA terminology. This guy refuses to call himself African. He refuses to refer to all those Africans as African. He only calls himself and everybody there um, black. He, he's using ADOS FBA terminology. These Africans suddenly are ashamed to call themselves African. They're ashamed. Go through TikTok, go through Twitter. You will not see one of these videos where these Africans are calling themselves Africans. Not one. They all got their chest out. We are black. Wait a minute. That was only us, ADOS FBA. You were proud Africans just a week ago. Shit hits the fan. We black. Flat blackness. Think about that. Yeah, uh, 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 watch, watch. And not one person, not one African will call themselves African. Not one. Here, once again. Okay, li listen to this dude. Watch, watch. Notice nation of uh, p people with arabic Hang or uh, african roots um what can you tell us now, about that check this out to prove my point to prove my point i'm gonna end it with this video i'm gonna prove my point this white guy calls the dude african but the african is gonna say black to prove my point listen to this interview this white guy starts off with african that black guy ends up with black I mean, the African ends up with black. This African refuses to call himself African. He calls himself black. Even though the white dude's going to say African or African descent, this African is like, no, no, black, black, black. I'm telling you, Africans are ashamed to call themselves Africans. Why? They should be proud. They're on the world stage. They should say, hey, we're African. We're being discriminated. No, they all have taken on the mouthpiece of Adolf Sefi uh, overnight. Watch. He will not use the term African. Watch. The white dude's going to start off African. Watch. Watch. Here we go. Um, uh, there were some reports about uh, discrimination of uh, uh, people with Arabic or uh, African roots. African roots. You heard him. Right? Right? Let's do it again. Um, uh, there were some reports about uh, discrimination of uh, people with Arabic or uh, African roots. You heard African. Here we go. Um, what can you tell us about that? Is this true? Did you experience something like this? Yes. Now watch. This dude is going to say black. He will not say African to save his life. I experienced that there's a lot of hostility um, from the um, white women. They really don't like us to be in the train. Somebody was telling me I have to stand up. I have to go out. If I don't, if I'm not a Ukrainian. I shouldn't be in the train of a Ukrainian. I should find anywhere I should go to. So it's really, really, really sad that we have to face this. And they prefer their pets, their animals, even before a black man or a black, black woman. That's what he said, black man, black woman. This is an African. The dude, like you, African. But watch, listen to me. Animals, even before a black man or a black woman. See, Africans are ashamed to call themselves Africans. They're ashamed. He's got the microphone in front of his face, the world looking at him. This should be the prime time for Africans to, to boast about being African, right? No, they take on Ados FBA mouthpiece. Folks, let me tell you something. We Ados FBA, we are the dopest group of people on earth. We are royalty, and specifically, we are black royalty. Listen to this dude. He's taking on the mouthpiece of Ados FBA. Even though he has an accent that, and, and a face that you know is African, he's using our very mouthpiece. I am black. Why? Listen. So it's really, really, really sad that we have to face this. And they prefer their pets, their animals, even before a black man or black woman. There you go. See? He refuses to use African. There you go. He refuses to use the term African. He's ashamed. Africans are now ashamed to call themselves African in public. I haven't seen one. Every video on Twitter, every video on TikTok, all these Africans, we are, we are black. Flat blackness. No, blackness is ADOS FBA. We've always called ourselves black. You guys are African. Africans are ashamed 
to call themselves African. That, and that's a shame, right? That's a shame. So it's really sad. I'm really traumatized, first of all. I really understand women first, then children first. Damn, he said he was traumatized. <laughs> we went through slavery and Jim Crow. He wouldn't make... So, okay, this is another thing. We built different. He said he's traumatized over that. Let's play it again. He said he traumatized. Then men, any mouse, even before a black man or a black woman. So it's really sad. I'm really traumatized. First of See, Africans ain't built like us. You heard what he said. He, he's really traumatized. Look, let's play it again. Man or a black woman. So it's really sad. I'm really traumatized. First there you go. He said he's traumatized. We built different. Adolf's FBA, we built different. We went through slavery and Jim Crow 350 years. He's just going through this little pity patty stuff. I'm traumatized. Nigga, we went through slavery and Jim Crow 350 years. The worst slavery known to mankind, the worst apartheid known to mankind, and we still here, nigga. We prospering. He, he's gone through this little bitty thing. I'm traumatized. See, we built different. Adolf's FBA, we just built different. We just built different. We just dope. Let's continue. Of all, I really understand women first, then children first, then men, but not animals, not pets before human beings. Okay, there you go. There you go. Oh man, Africans are ashamed to call themselves African. Got the whole world looking at them. And they are ashamed, not just African, they're ashamed they even use the term Nigerian or Ghana. They're ashamed. They're ashamed. But look at this tweet right here from a year and a half ago. <laughs> look at this tweet a year and a half ago. Africans are proud to call themselves Africans. Matter of fact, Africans are so pr were so proud to call themselves African that they were gatekeeping. Like, no, Adolf said they're not African. Africans were gatekeeping the term African. Look at your screen. Who's the only black one in there? Us Americans, right? Look, 26,000 likes, over 6,000 we tweets. 26,000 likes. Who was liking that Africans? See, Africans were gatekeeping the term African and saying to us, no, you're not African. You're black and we're not black. We're African. Now, all of a sudden, they're black. Shit hits the fan. We black. We black now. How come? Because Africans are embarrassed to use the term African. Look at just a year and a half ago. Africans were saying they were African and we are not African. We're black. They're African. And they were saying with their whole chest, 26,000 likes. Since last week, like homeboy said, Africans have been taking down their African flags. And now they're all using flat blackness. Oh, we're black. We're all black. No. No, you're African, we're black. We're Ados FBA. We're American over here. <laughs> you're African. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. Year and a half ago, y'all didn't have it twisted. A month ago, y'all didn't have it twisted. All of a sudden, now y'all confused. Oh, no, we're all black. No, no, we're not. You're African and we're black. We're Ados FBA. We're American. You're African. Keep that same energy. There you go. Let, 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 let me look at it. <laughs> So remember, like Queen Mandy said of the gatekeeping Africans, black Americans are not Africans. Russian President Putin says Africa is a cemetery for Africans. Putin says, quote, Africa will never be independent. Africans believe in Europeans, Americans, Chinese more than themselves. They don't trust themselves at all. A white man will commit crime in Africa, but no action will be taken because Africa authorities view us as semi-gods. Far from the truth, a black man can be abducted in Europe, get harassed or even killed, but no African authority will question. Africans present themselves as weak people with no hope, especially when dealing with Europeans and Americans. They are their own enemies. 
they hate each other and that gives their colonial masters power to continue exploiting African resources. When an African becomes rich, his bank accounts are in Switzerland. He travels to France for medical treatment. He invests in Germany. He buys from Dubai. He consumes Chinese. He prays in Rome and Mecca. His children stay in Europe. He travels to Canada, USA, Europe for tourism. If he dies, he will be buried in his native country of Africa. Africa is just a cemetery for Africans. How could a cemetery be developed? Putin asks.